the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for Nikki and his ministry and all those who work with him. And we just ask for a blessing on Germany through the work we're doing. That, and thank you for the good things that are going on there. May we be part of that in Jesus' mm. name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So, Nikki, very nice to meet you and to speak with you. And um, I think the people who are coming today to this meeting in Brandenburg, where we remember Max Joseph Metzger, and uh, would be very interested to hear of your interest in this. But um, first of all, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your German background, because I, not many people are aware of that. And also of your religious background, you know, or non-religious. Maybe you can tell us something about that. Well, uh, my um, father was a German Jew. He was um, from Stuttgart. Um, uh, he was a secular Jew. He didn't... Um, um uh practice judaism um, um my mother was a non church going um church of england uh, i didn't have a christian background um when i was 14 my mother told me that my father was german and jewish and i was never to speak to him about it and i never did and i never spoke to her about it either um so it's only after they died, he died in 1981 and she died in 1986, that I found out anything about my family. It's only in recent years and even in recent weeks that I found out many things about my family. Um, yeah. my, I personally encountered Jesus when I was in my first year at university and that had a radical change in my life. Um, and uh, then I was, uh, I practiced as a barrister for a few years, and then I was ordained as a, uh, um, a minister in the Church of England. But as far as my, my family and the German connection is concerned, I've discovered um, more and more as time's gone on. So a few years ago, I was contacted by a museum, uh, the Judaica Museum, that were researching my family. And they asked me what I knew about my family. And I said, I know absolutely nothing. Yes. And uh, I said, what do you know? And they, they sent me my family tree. And I discovered that my, um, uh, my grandfather was called Sigmund. My great-grandfather was Isaac. <clears throat> my great-great-grandfather was Abraham. Not wow. the Abraham, but yeah, um, yeah. Abraham. Um, and um, and then I discovered what they... And over the years since then, I've discovered a lot about my family and mm -hmm. what they did and, and about my father. Also, I've managed to get hold of his war records. Um, and um, so, I, so this is what I've discovered, that my father came from uh, Stuttgart. Um, his father was head of a law firm in Stuttgart. Um, my father was um, thrown out of, as well, uh, disbarred from practicing as a barrister in Germany, but he was he qualified as a barrister in England. He joined the British Army as a private in 1942 and was a colonel by 1945. He was yeah. interrogating Nazi officers to find out yeah. what made the Nazi mind tick. Yeah. Um, my um, uh, <clears throat> his his cousin. Emil Gumbel was the best known Gumbel. He was a professor of mathematics um, and um, he was thrown out of the university um, uh, for being Jewish. And Albert Einstein made a speech um, to a thousand students saying why Professor Gumbel should not be uh, removed from the university because he was an Israelite. Um, wow. and, I, and Einstein found him a uh, got him a job in paris in the university there and yes. um, then when hitler invaded he stayed 24 hours ahead of hitler and einstein got him a job in america where he stayed he was the inventor of the gumball distribution if you google the name gumball you'll find that that is the most uh that's the most common uh and still taught in universities um yes. so he was that was um emil gumball and then abraham um abraham so my father's cousin my, my great uncle was abraham another abraham gumbel who yeah. uh who uh, started the gumbel bank 
in Heilbronn, um, which was then, um, I guess, purchased by the Nazis in the um, um. 30s and is now Volksbank in um, Heilbronn is now. And uh, I this, in fact, I have it on, the, on my desk. This is the history of Volksbank uh, 1909 to 2009. And it's nearly all about the Gumbel family. Wow. Uh, this is my uh, great uncle, Abraham Gumbel. Uh, that's that's him. Wow. Very um, and then the in 2009, they put up a statue to um, to recognize that Abraham Gumbel had been the founder. That's the statue that is now in Volksbank, Heilbronn. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, um, <laughs> And um, and it's all about the rest of the family and what happened to them. Um, yes. A lot of them died in concentration camps, uh, but yes. my father uh, escaped, as yes. did his, and he got right at the end in 1939. My grandfather was arrested. Um, mm. and, um, he came back and uh, apparently poured himself a glass of whiskey, um, uh, slept for two hours, and said we were leaving, um, and yeah. that's how they left. And they came here. They came to England, um, and um, they um, left. Um, you know, they were a very wealthy family, I think, in in um, uh, Germany. But they came and were here with nothing. And my yes. father was here with nothing, and um, he um, he worked as a barrister here, and um, my mother worked as well, and. The, uh, so that that was my background. So That's since wonderful. then, I've, I've been back to Germany a number of times. I went to first time I went back was to Marburg in in the 1980s, um, and the moment I landed, I felt a great love for Germany, mm, yes. and I felt the Holy Spirit yes. on me. And Amen. I've been back many many times. Most yes. recently, about three weeks ago, I was in Augsburg at a conference called Mir, where there were 11,000 young people and 30,000 online. And wow. I managed to learn, um, <clears throat> my father wouldn't let me learn German, but I, 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 I learned enough to say, ich liebe Deutschland, ich ja. liebe die Deutsch. Ja, um, ja, richtig. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, can, I can say I love, I, and I, I, love I hope, I hope to have our next board meeting. I'm. I don't sit normally on the German board, but I. I, I would. I've. I've. Uh, trying to approach the bank to say I would love to have the next German board meeting at the bank. Um, wow. um, to as a sign of reconciliation. It's not that wow. we're trying to get the bank back. It's just yeah. that, like I would like to have. I feel that this is a time where the, these two great countries, Germany and Britain should be working closely yes. together again yes. with this new yes. generation. So I'm so pleased you be... said about so pleased you said about you have a great feeling for Germany. You know, yes, you, I do. I have a great love for Germany. You're German of background. I mean that's I'm, a... yeah I'm getting a German passport. My yes. children are getting German passports. Um and um we would love to um to in in a very small way, which is all we can do to play a part in reconciliation Wonderful. between the nations. Well, we're so great. I'm so grateful, and we're so grateful. Well, I mean, the people who know about you in Germany is that you agree to to chat with us here. So, if I can just move on a little bit, and it is it, it relates to what you're talking about, Max Joseph Metzger, who we're remembering today, who gave his life yes for, for Christian unity. Yes. Uh, and pioneered this without really permission from anybody. He just decided in the wake of a re-understanding of, of Luther that he wanted to bring the, the churches together. And his famous statement was, why are we still separated? I want to know, how do you feel um, Christian Catholic, Lutheran and general ecumenism helps you or helps us in the spreading of the gospel? Well, um <clears throat> I, I am, of course, a great admirer of um, uh, Max uh, Metzger for what he did. Um, uh, very similar to um, uh, Maximilian Kolbe. Um, yes. You know, they, these are saints who who didn't need to um, uh, were not Jewish and therefore wouldn't normally have ended up 
in concentration camps or being executed and yeah. the her terrific bravery of um people like like uh, Maximilian Kobe, Max Metzger, uh, and then on the Protestant side, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Bonhoeffer yes. and, and others who who were so brave in taking on. And in fact, the the grandfather. I've just been reading this. This is the grandfather of our chair of the Alpha Board, uh, Count Albrecht von Bernstoff, who <laughs> who also died in a concentration camp. Yes. Uh, for, for resisting Hitler, uh, and again, yeah. not a Jew, uh, yeah. uh, just someone who saw that it was wrong yes. and fought against um, Hitler. And th these were great heroes, really. Yes. Um, great heroes of the faith. And the unity yes. thing, um, yes. yes, Um, the unity is, of course, um, I first, in 1990, I heard Father, or well, now Cardinal Raniero Cantalamessa, Yes. Speak at a conference in Brighton about unity. And yes. I remember him saying it was a conference, nearly all, uh, there were about 3,000 pastors there, mainly Pentecostal pastors. Yes. Um, and, um, uh, but the only talk that I or anyone there can remember is Cardinal Raniero Cantalamese, right, right. who gave the most wonderful talk about unity. Yes. And he got a standing ovation for about 15 minutes. Um, wow. And he 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 spoke about the fact that what unites us as Christians is yes. infinitely greater than mm. what divides us. Amen. And um, you know, it's been an amazing thing that he his emphasis is on unity, evangelization, and the Holy Spirit, yes. and the influence he's had on Pope John Paul II, on um, and on uh, um, Pope Benedict, and now Pope Francis. I think is 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 clear to see, um, and uh, you know I'm so thrilled that Pope Francis also has a has a a, a very high um, view about unity, and yes. has been very generous to other churches. And I know he gets on very well with Archbishop Justin. Um, yes. They feel a very clo they've, they've close. They've trip together to Africa, haven't they? Yes, they've they, they went to Sudan, so, um, Sudan together, and yes. um, um, they, you know, they often meet and pray together, and yes. and I think that's a wonderful um, unity that has come yes. to the to do the churches. Do you, do you regard working together across the denominations as you do as a way, really, to bring the gospel more to life? I mean, I love. I love when, uh, when I was at the conference, there was everybody from all backgrounds. And yes. it felt so right, you know, this is, we're meant to be one. And when there's an extra power, I think, in it, when yes. you know, when, when we are working like that, there's, yes. the Holy Spirit loves that, you know, yes. that you're all together. I so agree, Kormay. I think that's absolutely right. Um, yes. uh, that You know, the Psalm 133, uh, yes. verse 1, how blessed it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. For there yeah. the Lord commands his blessing. Yes. And that's what we've always found. And also, where you know, I think <clears throat> um, very early on in my Christian life, I thought that uh, if people were from a different part of the church, there must be something wrong with them. Now I think, <laughs> now I think if there's something there, wrong with us. Uh, if, if, there's a, if they're from a different part of the church, there must be something I can learn that's from. That's um, right. That's um, in the and, church. The Catholic Church has very been like that, you know, until the Vatican too, it regarded everybody had to be a Catholic to really get them on the straight path. But then they have said there's some beautiful sayings in Vatican too about we have things must to learn from these other churches which are yeah. treasures for us. And yes. I regard your work as a treasure for the Catholic Church and yeah. uh, anybody who crosses the band because, you know, the beautiful music that comes from... You know, we got so much of an inheritance, which all belongs to the one church. Yes. However, it's, called, it's one. It's it's Christianity. You know. So. Yes. And I've um, learned so much from. The, I've been so inspired by, um, by by the Catholic Church. I mean, I'm very inspired. You know, I, somebody asked me, um, who was the person who had most influenced me apart from, you know, the people, my close friends, um, like Bishop Sandy Miller, people I've worked for. Those are the biggest influences yeah. on my life. But then they said, outside of that. Who has yeah. influenced you the most? And I said, um, uh, Cardinal or Father Raniero Cantalamestra is the person, I think, yeah. from whom I have um, been most inspired by all his books, his writings. Yeah. But his example, his example yeah. of a life of integrity 
of yes. uh, holiness, poverty, yes. uh, chastity, obedience, yes. um, and a huge sacrifice that he's made. Yes. Um, but yes. the but the wonderful combination of this brilliant mind, a professor yes. in yes. Milan, with this yes. huge heart of love and graciousness and yes. um, emotion that is so so beautiful and so inspiring. So mm -hmm. I've learned a huge amount from the Catholic Church. Yes. Um, but I've also learned from the Pentecostal Church and the Salvation Army and the Baptists. Yes. And, you know, they're different. You learned, we've done conferences with so many different people and different parts of the world also. Yes. You see, yes. the, the Christianity of Africa, the prayer, yes. the, yes. you know, the passion, the, the, um, uh, the Christianity of, in the, we've seen in China, <laughs> the courage yes. in the yes. Yes. In the persecuted church in yes. Asia, um, you know, I just think they're so inspiring. These different heroes yes. of the faith. I mean, I personally would be lost if I didn't have the same type of thing from being with like Alpha, but other things like that, and learning from all sorts because it's all for me. You know, if there's something yes. developed in a church, that's for me. Something other, and maybe we got yeah. something that we all have, and then yes. all together it makes a beautiful picture. Yeah, exactly. And Nikki, I'm going to bring you around to something. This we're remembering today. This is the 80th anniversary of the martyrdom of Max Joseph Metzger, and it's on the 17th of April. Now I know that you and others are looking forward to another 17th of April, which is 2033. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about that and how this might link together in any way? Well, how amazing that that is the anniversary. That's the 17th of April. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 2033. Uh, will be what 18 nine years will it on? That's right, that's right. Uh, <coughs> um, and you were there on the 80th. <laughs> well, the 17th of April, as I'm sure your viewers know, is the uh, Easter day 2033. Mm. Um, yes. and um, it will be, of course, 2000, 2000 years from the resurrection of Jesus. Yes, and uh, we're working together with lots of different people. Um, so the Bible translators will have the Bible. The New Testament in 99.96% of the languages of the world. And every language will have 25 chapters by the 17th of April. Uh, Rick Warren is working on a Bible, a believer in the body of Christ in every community. And uh, we're working with 70 different, I think we met in Rome with 70 different Catholic organizations, wow. all of whom are focused on the 17th of April, yes. 2033. And That's their prayer funny. movements and different, yeah. different movements. And for our part with Alpha, uh, we our part is to make Alpha available to everyone on the planet by the 17th of April 2033. So that's what I'm working on for the next if the Lord spares us. That's right. That's, that's, that's right. I'm looking forward to another date that I haven't men mentioned, but it's uh it's to do with Germany in particular, because the church is split at Augsburg. You probably know that at the Augsburg Confession. And they're getting very close to it, recognizing that it shouldn't really have happened like that. And I hope that happens along the path that there's greater recognition that we shouldn't have been a part in the first place. But I mean, uh, but there's wonderful, I think, so when I knew about what you were doing there, I said, well, this is the same day. Well, I'd like you to speak about April the 17th this year. Yeah. And did, you, do you, did you have, there's a quote there that you saw about, did you see that quote of, of that um, a great quote to do with Catholics and Protestants. Maybe you haven't got it there, but uh, just just remind me, and I and I will. Yeah, no, it says uh, it says uh, it says Catholics um, be evangelical, then evangelicals be more be more Catholic. You know, just learn from each other. It's a great plea by him to learn from the other ones, and that yes. was his leg. It was his legacy. He he died for that. Yes, and, uh, there's been so much good fruit from his death, not yes. just spiritually in the Catholic Church and between church and also in the New Germany because the, the New Germany of the CDU of the Christian Democratic was so inspired by the movement that he started but uh, yeah I'll, I'll send you that quote it's a no, wonderful wonderful quote, you know? wonderful, wonderful quote I mean I've I've never used any I never <clears throat> use any labels myself I that you know I, I'm I'm a follower of Jesus I'm a Christian Amen. I'm Amen. a Christian if you Good. torture me if you talk to me, I confess to being part of the Church of England. But yes. apart from that, <laughs> but apart yes. from that, I wouldn't use any 
any yeah. less. I, you know, I love, I love the Catholic Church. I love the Charismatics. I love the Pentecostals. I love the Evangelicals. Yes. I love all, love them all. Now they've all got something to contribute. Uh, do you know? I think you have a great advantage with your background. You're because you didn't come through those streams. You have a whether you knew it or not. You had a Jewish background, like the good yes. Lord himself, and so it's hard to be this or that because you, yeah. you work with the good Lord there. Yes, yes, I love the church, yeah. and I love that the verse, the the word that um, the Apostle Paul uses in Ephesians. Yes, um, about when he's praying uh, about the the. Uh, and he uses uh, uh, the Greek word, as you know, polypoikolos, uh, which is, um, it's very, it's only used one, it's once in the New Testament, it's the hapex legomena, it's only used once in the New Testament, yes. and he, he, it's the polypoikolos wisdom of God being revealed, and it's yes. like, it's a picture, he's praying for the whole church, yes. uh, and the word, it's, it's sometimes translated uh, multivaried, um the manifold wisdom of god the right. different translations but yes. um, it's but the word is is used once in the old te in the in the septuagint translation of the he of the um hebrew old testament yes, yes. and it, it, and the, the 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 occasion it's used is for joseph's coat of many colors all oh, right um, <laughs> and so he's he, that's the sort of picture of the the yes. whole church the yes, beauty yes. of the, the polypoikolos yes. the wisdom of god being revealed in the church so that yes, god's yes. god's variety is revealed yes god's multivaried manifold yes. polypoikolos um, is revealed I must in do the do church <laughs> so when we all come together yes. when we come together if we're just part of it we're just like blue or orange or or yeah, red yeah, yeah. But when we yeah. all come together, we've yes. got the beauty of yes. um, the manifold oh, wisdom of God being revealed to the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. My background in the UK um, was in a charismatic group in North London with oh, uh, yes. Don Benedict. Oh, oh yes, Don Benedict. Yeah. We loved yeah. him. Well, he's my spiritual father. Oh, he's yeah, a wonderful he, man. And he, he always said that I'm at home in every church. I, yes. every, I'm at home everywhere. And I feel the same. If you love Jesus, I'm at home in your church. Yeah. Now, there isn't a differentiation. Very man who was very open to the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. He well, loved the Holy years, Spirit. For six years, he mentored me, you know, uh, the important years of my life when I needed a lot of mentoring. And he did that. And a lot of the Wonderful things we do now come from, we you know, his, uh, you know, he just, he was so good for me. Nikki, I'm, I, would you, uh, would you say a prayer for this day that we're celebrating? Yes. And also for the German church to come closer together and be, that we can all manifest Christ like the Joseph's coat. Can you say a prayer for yes. that? Yes. Yes, Cormac, I'd love to do that. Thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for Cormac and we want to thank you for Max joseph metzger thank you lord for this 80th anniversary of his life his this wonderful life and his sacrificial death thank you for him and people like him thank you we thank you also for maximilian colby and other great catholics and protestants like uh, dietrich bonhoeffer and for the way they they showed such courage uh, and we thank you that uh, Max Metzger had this vision for unity. Yes. And we pray, Lord, that what he, uh, he uh, think of that verse where Jesus says, a lesser gra grain of seed falls into the, gra into the earth and dies. Yes. It remains alone. But if it dies, mm. it bears much fruit. Mm. And think of um, Max Metzger's death and the fruit that that has borne. Mm. in germany the unity in the mm. church and we want to pray now that as we celebrate the 80th anniversary of his death that <clears throat> there would be great fruit from oh, yes. this mm. from his life and his death and that we will see in germany uh, once again the unity of the church catholics and protestants coming together to glorify jesus and we Amen. pray too for reconciliation. Mm. Reconciliation has taken place 
uh, to some extent, but we pray for an even greater reconciliation between yeah. the great country, Great Britain and Germany, um, yeah. that there would be a, a working together again of these two nations. And the churches in these nations would come together in a wonderful way to demonstrate reconciliation and unity, and that there would be um, a revival. There was just sense when I last in Augsburg and seeing the Mir conference, 11,000 young people, 30,000 watching online, the sense that there's revival happening in Germany. And we pray that this will grow and flourish in Germany and Austria and all over Europe, that out of Germany will come a new movement, a new revival. And that what the sacrifice of Max Metzger will not be in vain. That, uh, there will be massive fruit as people celebrate his life and death on this 17th of April, 2024. And we pray, Lord, that in the coming years, the good news of Jesus will go out throughout Germany. And everyone in Germany will have the opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus, his life, death and resurrection. In his name we ask it. Amen.